Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I have DNF'd so far in 2023. I will probably not go into great depth because when I DNF a book it tends to be within like the first chapter <laughs> and it's usually a gut reaction to something. But this year I am aspiring to be a little bit more like Heather from Here Booktubes who is a queen of DNFing books. I think it's something that we do need to talk about a lot more here on Booktube and in the book community and I think we need to be a lot better at acknowledging when we don't like something and not just pushing through for the sake of content. Because interestingly enough, DNFs is apparently a form of content that people want to watch. When I DNF a book, it is usually because something about the writing doesn't sit right with me or something about the characters isn't working for me. And it's very rare for me to be further than say 20% of the way through the book and then DNF. I, I will say if I'm like 75% of the way into the book, I might push through to the end just to see if I can figure out exactly what's bothering me. But generally speaking, like first couple of chapters, I'm, I've made a decision about whether or not I'm going to keep reading the book. We're going to kick off with something absolutely wild because you guys know I, I don't mind reading something weird and wacky and I attempted to read Wet Hot Allosaurus Summer at, by Lola Forst and just could not. I could not. I like weird. This was too weird for me. There was Where the Wind Blows by L.H. Edwards which I think was a book that I picked up at a signing but I started reading it and I just was not getting into it at all. I just nothing about the writing or the characters connected me and I was just not interested. I also DNF'd From the Embers by Ellie Martinez and I have had since had people tell me that if I kept going with the book my reasons might have changed but I as I said I'm not worried about DNFing a book. This one bothered me because of the way the two main protagonists in the story were talking to each other at the start of the book and I know that it is a tragedy that brings them together because they're both married to different people at the start of the book and then there is a fire and they fall in love after that because both their partners die. The way they spoke to each other, I, I don't know how Ali Martinez would have made me feel better about their relationship. There would have had to have been a lot of work and to be honest I probably wasn't in the right place for that book at that time but I also don't feel compelled to go back to it either. There is What Happens on Tour by Lucy Fur. I started reading this one. It was very text heavy in terms of day-to-day step-by-step sort of information that we were given about the characters and the setting and I just was not getting into it. So for me that one was more about writing style than anything else. One exception to my early DNF rule was One Pucked Up Pack by Sarah Blue which was a Why Choose I think Omegaverse hockey romance. I think I got about 45% of the way through this book and nothing had happened. Nothing had happened and it just was taking too long to get to the point of everything so I did not keep reading it. There was Cold Temptation by Laura Marquez Diamond which was a hockey romance. I'm pretty sure it was a player and one of the support staff on the team maybe but I just was not feeling the story at all. I just I read it and it was honestly a bit bland for me so I put it down. I started listening to the audiobook of Flirtosaurus by Erin Mellon but honestly the heroine in here was just I don't want to say insufferable because that sounds really harsh but I just could not stand her internal monologue and I know that that's a p total personal preference but I just I couldn't I, I could barely get past the first like two chapters. I DNF'd Fox by Nana Malone which was just that was just a personal preference around the writing style. I was really not getting into the story at all. I DNF'd Traded by Carly Marie. This is one of those books that I should have read more about it beforehand. This is an MM hockey romance. It has daddy kink. One of the heroes is looking for a daddy. The whole setup just did not work for me in this case. But that again is personal preference. It is probably to other people's taste, just not mine. Need Your Number by Mariah Goodman. I think this again was just writing style. I started reading it and it just did not click for me. Also a shame because I really like the cover of this one. I think the rest of these are all hockey romances because I've been on that absolute kick. Sometimes you try them and they work and sometimes they really don't. Golly Secret by Riley Knight. I can't even remember why I DNF this one. It would have been writing style more than likely. The Hat Trick by Maddie Danielle was definitely writing style. Just did not click with me and I just wasn't interested at all. Empty Net by Tony Aleo was something that kept coming up on my Libby account and so I'd borrowed it because Yay, well goalie romances, right? Like I've, I've, I'm deeply fascinated by goalies and the fact that anyone wants to get hit by fast moving dangerous objects for fun or professionally. I think there has to be a really interesting psychology there but anyway that's not the point of this video. But I was looking for goalie romances because I'm interested. Yeah this didn't work for me and I'm also pretty sure this was a closed door romance. It seemed like it was anyway but yeah I just wasn't 
vibing with the characters in this one so I DNF'd it. And The Ozone by Kelly Jameson was another one that I DNF'd and I might actually come back to this one. I'm this one is probably the only one on the list that I might come back to. One, I have a physical copy of it. I got it at Rare. And I bought it because I just wanted to try and also I wanted to support the authors that had come all the way out from overseas. So I don't regret that. And I, I figure I might be able to come back to it at some point later in the year because I have read Kelly Jameson and liked her writing. So I'm still unsure as to why this one didn't quite work for me. And I think it might have just been end of term tiredness. But it was taking too long for me to actually get into the flow of the story so I put it down. So those are the 14 books that I have DNF'd so far in the year. I'm definitely getting choosier about what I continue to read as I get older and I don't know whether this seems like a lot or isn't a lot compared to what other people do. I know it's definitely not a lot compared to Heather but for me the fact that I can now just go yeah no I'm not reading that anymore is really helpful. Like I've had I've had to work my way up to this and I shouldn't have had to do that but it certainly wasn't a peer pressure thing. This was more just a my brain thing and now I am less precious about finishing books. I've only got so many hours in the day and I want to read things that bring me joy and I'm definitely doing that more these days. I'm also not going to be asking anyone to convince me to read these books. I'm very rarely going to pick up anything that I DNF again because once I've DNF'd it it's gone from my brain. So I'm definitely not asking for people to convince me to read them. I am however interested in books that you have DNF'd. So if there is something that you have DNF'd this year feel free to let me know down below. I'd be very interested in hearing about that. Otherwise if you just want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment feel free to leave a flame emoji down below or a fire emoji. I hope that wherever you're in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.